Let's go, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Bullets, Barbells, and Barbecue. I'm your host, Brett. Uh, Chris is not here today. I got Matt Deuce Deuce here. They got Tanner the Head. I thought it was the greeter. No. <laughs> <laughs> very effective. No. We have our show partners, Elite Nutrition Omaha. Check them out, EliteNutritionOmaha.com. Use code B3 at checkout. Or you can go to the store and yell B3. Get a free shaker. We also have Rosewood Black. They make the best cutting boards and barbecue, fully customizable. Check them out at rosewoodblack.com. Use code B3 at checkout for 10% off there. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe, share, follow. Uh, actually listen to it, unlike Chris. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, Apple's actually changed it. If you haven't listened to one of the past three, I think they don't automatically download anymore. So there's that. They because, suck. Yeah. We just want you to be a little less shitty every day is the real goal. So this is our check-in, but the biggest check-in is that Matt finished 75 hard. Finally, 109 days later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but give him some of your stats that you sent me. Uh, did, ended up rucking at least 275 miles. More than that, it was just averaging <clears throat> two and a half miles a day. So did that, 1,700 and some change pages, no booze. Zero booze, which is really sad. And then down 40 pounds, just under 40 pounds. You look lean, a lot leaner too. I like, feel a lot better. Yeah. Where are you at now, weight wise? So right now, I'm probably, I'm like, I was 308 when it ended. I'm probably 312 now. <laughs> yeah. I thought we went to sushi the other night. So that's, uh, yeah. But sushi just like disappears fast. It does. It's you get salt. full, and then like all of a sudden, like two hours later, yeah. you're like hungry again. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't ruck for a couple days, so I finished on that Tuesday. I didn't ruck Wednesday or I did Thursday, not Friday, and then I did this morning. But I really like that. Like that, that's definitely something I'm going to keep in the mix is rucking. I did not ruck yesterday with you because we got barbecue instead. Because you that's, that's were a much working. better idea. So me and yeah, old heavy C went to fucking barbecue, <laughs> yeah. and it was delicious. <sighs> yeah, I bet it was really good. Yeah, I wasn't mad about it. Yeah. Where'd you go? Uh, I went to Smoking Barrels. It's over by the Millard Airport. He used to have a food truck um, over by Hobby Lobby off Millard Ave. So they're pretty solid. I think uh, there's more good barbecue restaurants coming up in Omaha. Obviously, you got Blaine out at Porky Butts. He's always doing good out there. Um, Smoking Barrels is pretty solid. They got pretty solid brisket. I had their brisket and ribs yesterday, and they do a pretty good job with turkey. I was going to hammer some turkey, but yeah, the. The uh, caliber of barbecue is really up in its game in Omaha. Well, when you see, it's like iron sharpens iron. Right. Good. <laughs> if you have a really good barbecue place come in, everyone has to step up their game or no one's going to go there. Right. Anymore. Well, you yeah. know, Chris and I were talking about like um, a place we used to go and we're like, I feel like the quality went down. And I was like, well, now I don't know if the quality went down or it's like, you know, if you make a brisket for your neighbor and they never have it, they think it's the best thing ever. True. Well, if there's only like two barbecue restaurants in town, you're going to be like, oh, this one's super good. But now when there's like, six barbecue restaurants in town you're like eh, this one's better yeah, it's really it's they're still the same everyone else is just yeah. a little bit better or whatever so or you just got used to it it's always the, that first time you eat something you're like oh my Ooh. god this is so good like meth yeah <laughs> like crack <laughs> yeah that was, Kelly, that was kelly's problem <laughs> yep. always always, the first one. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think your biggest takeaway from 75 hard is um do you think you and I kind of talked about? It. Do you think yeah. you got as much out of it maybe as someone who's who doesn't really have a right direction in life or right. isn't really maybe self motivated? Yeah, I think for me it was. I think the biggest takeaway was just like a realignment of like, hey, when when you do just get focused, like you can get a lot of shit done and you can you can make stuff happen. Because um, I've gotten through spurts, whether it's like work or outside of work, of like being really focused and really dedicated to something and sticking to it and like just crushing it. Um, and then for the last couple of years, I haven't really had anything like that. So I think, f for, at least for me, that was that takeaway was that, that confirmation or that reaffirmation of like, just s make the plan, hold yourself accountable, and do it. And I think, like for me, it, w it was like this was really cool to share with to share with you guys and have like a much higher level of accountability than if it was just like me doing it. Um, <clears throat> it's it's great to have people who are like, yeah well you really fucked that up or had to start over again huh 
that kind of stuff like i was really really great and a, and a cool experience to have that um but yeah i think I, I don't i'm not walking away from it being like holy shit this revolutionized my life where i think some people could like we had talked about like if my brother was to do this and actually stick through it for 75 days i think he could potentially have a huge overhaul in in how he in his outlook and like what he wants to do and so it, people who haven't gone through that that done that in the past where you had some kind of like high level dedication or really focused on something to get to, to make it happen. Like you go through this 75 days is enough to really get habits that stick and see results of just like sticking to that habits. Cause there were a lot of other things that came out of it. Like I slept better because I was like, well, they're going to go to the bar. I could go to the bar, but then I'm going to be tempted to eat food. I'm probably going to drink more pop than I would water. I'm going to be up late. I'm going to be tired. I got to get up. Maybe I had to like ruck in the morning. So I'd go to bed. I'm like, nah, it's cool. Then I'd stay home and go to bed. And then I would sleep and I would wake up in the morning. I'm like, huh, I feel pretty good. Like I'm not hungover. I'm not all bloated from food. I didn't drink a shitload of water or pop before I went to bed. So I didn't have to get up and pee 98 times, a little baby bladder. Um, so that that was cool. And just kind of, there are other things that improved that weren't necessarily directly part of the challenge. So mentality wise, you don't think it was... I don't think it was like a big overhaul for me, but I think what it it was just that reaffirmation of, of like, remind, like a reminder, yeah, yeah, like that reminder of like, hey, all you gotta do is decide, like, yes, I, I'm gonna do this, and and it, and it can happen, and you can and you can do that, and like sometimes it sucks, like when I was saving my rucks until the last thing of the day, that's cool if the last thing of the day is at seven, not cool when the last thing of the day is at like midnight, then it's two like, in the morning, yeah, two in the morning, <laughs> right, and you're just like fuck but it was also cool like i that was probably that one that that 2 a.m rock and there were a couple where it was just fucking super rainy and then a few when it was like when i first started when it was just blizzard and super fucking cold and it was just like those were probably my like my top five favorite rucks because you're out there and it's miserable and you're just like it's super easy you just have to do it like it's just it's a walk you're like yeah, rucking's not that crazy no, it's not. And you can you can change it. Like I would I would vary it up by either doing just like I had different distances. I didn't always go for just 45 minutes. I'd go through Hummel Park. Um, I have a log that I found out in Hummel Park that I would carry as long as I could until it was just like, okay, this is just stupid, miserable. And I would drop it. And then the next time I came back around, I'd pick the rock, pick the log up and I'd carry it and do this kind of same thing. So there's different ways to spice it up. But the cool thing about that is like it's something you have to do, but it's super fucking easy and it's 100 percent in your control like the only thing that would stop you from doing it is you and so being out there in those was kind of cool to just like live in that moment of being like yeah it's fucking pouring rain my shoes are filled with water i'm super fucking cold my backpack i can feel the water running down my ass crack coming out of my backpack but oh fuck i've still got 30 minutes <laughs> So just go and you get it done and you came back and it was like fun. I like almost felt more awake and ready to go when I came back from that, that really heavy rain one than I did on almost like any of the other ones. I was like, that was super fucking fun. Nice. Yeah. I think if you're a pretty mentally tough or driven person, I like I said, I think it's just a reminder. I don't know how much it's going to change you. I think that some people probably also, I think with, with any kind of goal setting things, I think people's significant others can sometimes be problematic. Mm -hmm. All yeah, of us are, all of us have significant others that are supportive because of all the crazy like shit we've done, like mm -hmm. business lifting, you know, whatever we've done. But I know there's people out there kind of like we talked about different friends that are like almost, Oh man. Oh, I thought we were going to hang out or we're going to do this. And it's like, or you're, you know, I haven't seen you since he started this. You're going to try yeah. and be better than me. You know what I mean? And like I said, luckily we don't have uh, a setup like that. But I know there's people out there. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and that's that's hard. But you know, I mean, try to support the people that are they're trying to do something different. Yeah, and something that's good. You know, if they're like, hey, you know what? Uh, me and some guys are going to get together and bang heroin this weekend. You can be like, mm, you know, so hard. Yeah, how much? <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. But, you know, if they're doing something that's yeah. trying to, they want to try to improve themselves, you know, be a little supportive. You can go on the ruck with, you don't have to wear a weighted pack to go on a walk with somebody. Yeah, yeah I think Aaron, Aaron went on probably 25% of them with me. Yeah, Aaron needed the think, support on her side. Yeah, she needed the support. <laughs> um, but I don't think she ever, she wore a ruck a couple of times. 
Um, but actually, she started walking with a neighborhood friend who wants to go out and do more walking and stuff. And I think, like, for them, like, that's great. And she came back the other day, and she's like... Is her name Bernice, and she's 100? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Um, but she came back, and she was like, hey, do we have any lighter ruck plates? And I was like, no. Why would I have... We only have men's one? sizes. <laughs> yeah. I was like, we have adult sizes or a backpack. Like, what do you want? Um, but so she was, she was really wanted to have to get a ruck, and so she was going to start doing that. So I found... And if you need one, like Etsy actually has some pretty cheap steel plates that you can get that are like milled for rucking. We're trying to just power through the power outage. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what just happened. The light just went out, but I, I think, think it's that one ballast probably. I think the whole blue. ballast is out. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so if you need a ruck plate, <laughs> this, uh, I don't know, I can find the guy's name, but if you want to X Etsy and you look up ruck plates, the guy carves them out of whatever A36 steel is, but you, you do, like, they're all the same size, but they're just different thickness. So he has 10, 10, 20, 30, 40 pound ruck plates that you can buy. And like the 40 pound ruck plate was, it was a hundred bucks, but even just to buy that same size piece of steel from like a wholesaler was going to be like 200 bucks. And this guy has one that's already has like the, the milled over edges. It has a handle in it. No, we're okay. Will it fit cool. in a Go Ruck pouch? Yep, they're nine by fifteen. Because I know that Titan also yep. sells uh, Ruck plates. I haven't, mm-hmm. I haven't compared prices on them or anything, but I know they sell. Yeah, them Titan also. was was similar. I think the thing with these plates is they're untreated, so they'll like you'll either have to like coat them or do something because I'm sure they'll rust. He must have a steel business. These are just spare yeah. pieces he has left. But he's got some stuff. But I mean, like the the forty pound one is an inch and a half thick steel, so it's a it's a big chunk. But I wanted to reach out to him and like, I want to see what these are, but reach out to him like, hey, can you make like a 60 and an 80 pound one just to be super obnoxious? Like, I mean, obviously I could just stack a couple together and accomplish the same thing, but I'd kind of like to have just a big fat piece of steel to put in there. So it'll totally break my backpack and, and my bulletproof back. and bulletproof. Um, he did say somewhere on there that he could make those out of AR 500 steel if you wanted. So if you want, <laughs> once that'll take up to a 308, yeah, you could have that. Nice. Um, yeah, so from your success to Tanner's failure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I was so close to that 300. And by the way, I'm going to be maxing out every, every Monday, Monday and, and Friday. Friday. <laughs> For those who want to come and watch. Monday and Friday. <laughs> Until wanna, this fucking thing happens. <laughs> if you want to watch failure. It's close. Yep. It was close. Like horseshoes and hand grenades. Yep. A little bit closer than that, but... <laughs> It was surprising, like how fast it came off your shoulders. It just was like, Burr. I think it was like shocking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like oh, it was moving too fast. Did it you try like leaning it. back more? <laughs> no. Oh, it's a it's a shoulder press. Did you try shrugging it halfway up? <laughs> Did I try? Just These are just some tips it? I've heard yeah. around the gym. Just push press it when you're done. Just get some, it out there. Just give it a little bounce. Yeah. These are just some tips I've heard around yeah. the gym. <laughs> try shrugging it. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Um, it felt good. Cause weren't you gonna deadlift or deadlift? Yeah, I had a little hand issue this week. Yeah, you got beat up by some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> Watch so, where you put your hands, Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just go grabbing everybody by the pussy. Okay. <laughs> Only certain people can do that. Yeah. I think if you'd have bought that, if you bought that cat a futon, you could have got away with it. <laughs> I think that's what he bought. Some kind of furniture. <laughs> furniture, yeah. Yeah. So you just overhead. You didn't. Were you going to bench too? I uh, might. Yeah. I tried to. I tried on Monday, and then my hands got kind of fucked up, so I had to wait till Friday. So I'll probably just maybe I'll just max out again next week. And everything I was going to do last week. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I, I are gave you still him a tip. Of, meds for your hand? Are you still on antibiotics for the yeah. hand? Yeah, she needs to you know, train more. And if training doesn't work, there's other stuff you can do. Training. <laughs> so, that's what I told Brett. I'm like, dude, I'm going to, like, I haven't done tread, but I'm about ready to. <laughs> like, I know he goes, you know, it's training this. And I go, have you thought about drugs? <laughs> and, you know, he said, he's, now he's thinking about it. Yeah. Training thing is possible. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
What do you What are you doing it for? Three hundred pounds strict press. That's it. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. Hey, if you want to want to be the best at something, right, you'll yeah. be willing to do anything. Didn't yeah. want that year and a half of my life anyway. Yeah, yeah. The worst year and a half, probably <laughs> yeah. at the end. <laughs> oh God, one less year of shit myself. <laughs> yeah, I had a, it was kind of a weird week with. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't super motivated to do a whole lot either. I did some jumps, but with JF yeah. and. And the old coach is back, so we did some jumps. That's good. But he uh, just started, like, stacking boxes up. So we went from, like, a, a 36, then did, like, a, a depth jump down onto, like, a, a 30 or something like that. And I was like, what do you, do you know you're stacking up when you fucking set this up? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. It got high fast. Yeah, no shit. No shit it did. <laughs> but between that, and I was kind of finishing stuff up for the meet at the, yeah. the big Ed Cohen meet Saturday. This will be out Friday. So, yeah, come down and check out the meet Saturday. It's 10 bucks to get in. The goat will be here judging people. I'll be judging people just in general, but he'll be yeah. judging them officially. Oh, we got a red wave back in too, so I'll have that in stock. Red wave. Tanner will be here selling whatever Slanging merchandise. Drugs. 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 <laughs> Matt will be here helping the people. True. Chris will not be in attendance. He has to work. God, what a piece of shit. Yep. <laughs> it's the worst. Yeah. I did last night, so uh, son, our 11-year-old, had his uh, spring concert. You know, and you have to like sit through. Uh, it's just a bunch of fucking tone deaf kids singing. <laughs> yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Surprisingly, their sixth brand, sixth grade band's pretty good. Like I'm like, what they play? Huh? What they play? I don't know. I don't Star care. Star Wars. Oh no, Dragon Warrior. What? Warrior Dragon. Something like that. I had a dragon and a warrior maybe somewhere in the title. Were they singing or just band playing songs? Band was just playing. So they didn't do like Crazy Train or anything cool like that. No. Oh. I think their that band teacher out there is like. He's he's a younger kid, and I think he like is like one of those like nice, super disciplined Marion person. Like yeah. he's nice, but like everyone does the like just yeah, does it. Yeah. But so after the fifth graders go, we're like halfway through, and like we had to sit there for everything, right? Well, I'm not sure what Thomas heard or what his what he, what he was thinking, but I see him run out like. Like he's sitting over with his class, yeah, and then he leaves. I'm like, "What is this kid going?" So I go to go out, and he comes running around. And he's like, "All right, I told my teacher um, that we had to leave a week after I performed." I was like, "What?" He's like, "Yeah, I, I told my teacher we had to leave." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." So I like peek her, like people around the corner. I'm like, "Come here, babe." <laughs> like Thomas just told his teacher that we had to go afterwards. He, she's she's like. Well, that's cool. <laughs> like, yeah. And as we're leaving, we get the grandparents and they're like, oh, good job, Thomas. I'm like, this is not, we should not be, <laughs> like, I am happy that I don't have to sit through another half hour of this, but <laughs> we are promoting bad behavior. <laughs> and as we're going out, a couple of dads were like, where are you guys going? It's like, well, Thomas told Miss Thompson that we had to go after he was up performing. They're like, good job, bud. <laughs> like, you know, what if, what if she's one of the dozens and dozens of fans and now she's going to know his game? Mm-hmm. Well, he only has like a week left of school, and it's all like popcorn parties and watching movies and right. nothing else. Again, the- back to the '90s, the best. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like they do nothing. Fucking this kickball like- tournaments, like the last fucking track and field day. Right. Like yeah, yeah. We even in the last couple of years, I was in I think middle school. We went to like uh, like the pool, and then there was like a park with a basketball court, so you could either like go to the pool or go play basketball, and they have like tournaments and shit like that. Like I'm not great. sure what this last week of school is about. Like, can we just like stop going? We, yeah, but no, that, we got but, long hours of kickball. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what else are you going to do? Yeah. You know, yeah. socialize. Yeah. But it was, <laughs> it was just like, all right, so we got out of there, didn't have to wait for traffic, you know, didn't have all the, <laughs> didn't have to watch people. Is I there a lot know. of traffic coming from a concert like that? Yeah. I mean, it's at the high school and it's all like fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So it's all their parents. It's a small town. So everyone's there and it's in the high school parking lot. So Uh, like you're parked in, like we're parked in the grass. You know what I mean? Like the whole parking lot's full. Like this is a small town and it's that time where people are still watching their kids. Oh, like do yeah. things like in elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, how big is their class? Or like, what's his, his class size? Uh, the grades are like 40, 40 people. Oh, that's pretty small then. Yeah. Yeah, because I had like 165 in mine, but and that was a fairly small town. Yeah, I had I had 800 in mine. <laughs> yeah. You went to Platteview, didn't you? Yeah, we graduated 88. Yeah, we had we had it was the largest in Lincoln before they built 
the two new high schools and they've built two more since then. Like we were sitting with four high schools and way too, and that was only, it was only 10th, 11th and 12th when I went there and there were 2,400, 2,500 kids in the school. Right. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a, I don't know. Yeah. I got nothing else to check in on really. Yeah. Just trying to get everything done for the meet next week. We'll probably uh, do one with Ed while he's in town here. Dr. Drew will be here. Yep. Maybe get a, get everybody together and. You know, see what's going on with Ed's life. Truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, the meat should be good. Should be some good numbers, some good solid lifters. Mm-hmm. It's amazing how his how Ed's numbers have held up for so long. Right. Like there's, you know what I mean. Well, like, like he always said, that no one will do it the way he did it. No one will do it, but even even just numbers. You know, like even if you even if you um, don't do all this is all stiff bars. What he did, and they're stiff not stiff bar doing, two hour weigh in. The two hour weigh ins is a big one. That's a huge one, right? But even with all the changes. The, his numbers hold up, right? Like there are but very few. They're, they're still super elite numbers. Yes, yeah. it's just crazy when you are like the greatest. Like we were talking last week about just greatness. Like you don't have to know everything about it, a sport or about uh, an activity to know if someone's great at. Like you can use your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I mean, Ed's been obviously he's still a part of the sport and he's been around, but he hasn't lifted for years. But and he trains at a, a pretty small gym in Chicago, and Steffi Cohn was just out there like two weeks ago trying to get some pointers from him, and that chick's broke like what twenty five world records yeah. or whatever yeah. he's got. He's like one of the one of the best like hands on coaches <clears throat> I've ever seen. Just like he watches you, but he doesn't. And he, he will put his hands on you and inflict pain normally if he does yeah. put his hands on you. <laughs> but even like so, like the very first time he was out here doing that seminar, just the number of people who he just like hey do this, and they're like oh wow that felt really good, and they would have a PR. Or just like the, the craziest one was maybe it was I can't remember who he was talking to, but like she's lifting and he's watching her and he just he's like watch this and just goes up and he kneels down and like was just that talks uh, to her. Elizabeth Gregory? I think when he just went up and grabbed the bar while she was deadlifting. Yeah, and like just talks to her and just like touches the bar, just talked to him, like distracted her from like thinking too much about it, and she just fucking crushed whatever the weight was, and he's like, yeah, you're just thinking too much, just stop. And like walked away, and I remember we were like, "What the fuck?" As a fucking magician, yeah. but it was like that on like deadlifts and squats and bench and everything. Like just seeing this little stuff and be like, "Ah, uh, do this, like do this, feel this in your back." And like, "All right, cool." And then it works. And then for what I've seen, like I've watched some YouTube's and stuff on him and stuff like that. Like it's he doesn't have, he's not a like one trick pony. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Like it's not that like every he's trying to get everyone to do the same thing. To do what he does. Yeah, no, he's like no. This he just he do. like watches them, and it's like okay, you do this, and like we can get from point A to point B in a lot of different ways, and he just figures out like it doesn't all have to look the same. Right. It doesn't yeah. all have to. The setup doesn't have to be yeah. the same. What do you do ahead of like not? It just this is what you have. <laughs> this is how to make it better. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. just gonna take what you're already doing and just yeah. make it more efficient. Yeah. Like enhance it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Without drugs. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a, an interesting guy to talk to. He's super humble. So if mm-hmm. you're uh, out and about, swing by. Lifting starts at nine. Um, Ed's judging, but in between lifts, he'll always talk to people. Yeah. After the meet, he'll always talk to people. Sign, yep. Sign people's shirts and whatever else. But should be some solid lifting. We're gonna get a, we're gonna give away like five grand in prize yeah. money. Some championship I mean, belts. That. What's that? He goes to some gym out there, but it's like a private gym, and the guy does like self defense fighting. Oh, yeah, he's in um, the Jeet Kune Do with, um, yeah. uh, what's that guy's was, That guy's super nice. I've met him before. Yeah, but it was something else. Like, the guy just took away, like, all these different martial arts and kind of, like, built his own home, like, self-defense fighting stuff. And it's like, Ed goes out there and does that stuff. He does knife fighting. Yeah, it's like, like knife fighting. So Ed always has a knife on him. And he'll come through and he's like, oh, yeah, hey, come here and try this. And he'll just, like, show some stuff and move around. I was like, Jesus, Ed, you're fast. <laughs> like, when he goes, like, move and, like, pull his knife out and do something, I was like, oh, shit, Ed, you're kind of actually, like, dangerous. Yeah, and he's, when he grabs a hold of you, you're not going anywhere. He's right? got massive hands with like a wicked grip on him still. Both hands? Yes. It's so not like you. We just. Uh, just... So we did a grip tester thing. <laughs> one of the guys brought in one of those digital grip machines. Here? Yeah. When? Uh, what night was that? Wednesday night? Thursday night? Wednesday or Thursday. I think Thursday. And uh, so he's like, hey, you want to just like hammer me and do this? And so I did like 140 with my right hand. 
Matt had 132. Fucking champion. <laughs> all right. What was your left hand, Brett? We didn't do left hands. We all knew better. Brett than that. was your left hand. <laughs> we didn't do it. You didn't even just like check to see how dysfunctional your left hand is compared no. to your right. No, once I knew I beat Matt. <laughs> that was all. And he didn't offer his left hand either. We're not we're not stupid. I don't grab things with my other hand. <laughs> Same yes, you do. In my pocket. No, it stays in my pocket. <laughs> I got one hand in my pocket and the other one's given a peace sign. <laughs> <laughs> did you just quote away the sports head? <laughs> I did. I did. From the late 1900s. <laughs> but, yeah, so we'll all be there. Except Chris. We'll have some uh, shirts for sale. Yep, yep. Some podcast shirts for sale. Um, but, yeah. Come check it out. Have a good time. We'll have... Mm-hmm. We'll have burgers. We'll have wieners. And hot dogs. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, my sister and my mom will be cooking up. My sister's down here cooking post tornado. I asked her if she still wanted to, and she said for sure. So I hope, well, I don't know if she lost her apron. Do you remember her apron she had last year? Cooking for all you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should ask her. You can probably get one on Amazon sent here. Yeah. Before Friday or Saturday. Yeah, I'll have to ask her if she lost it. We'll see if we can figure it out. But yeah, come check us out. And uh, like I said, like like we're doing, like, subscribe, share. Try to be a little less shitty every day. Um, if you want to try seventy five hard, and you got any questions that you can't, you're not sure about, and obviously you can't ask Andy. He's hard to get a hold of. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. You can reach out. You can ask Matt. Um, if you want to leave comments about how asinine we are, <laughs> <laughs> we got a YouTube comment. But you know, we're here for it. Hey, all comments are accepted. Okay. Yeah. So Everybody's thoughts, feelings, and concerns are all on there. I wanted to go back and be like, hold on. If you think this Listen is asinine. To this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that wasn't even that asinine of a yeah. conversation. But. It, w- it was not that asinine. And I feel like he's like age appropriating my words. Like asinine's my age, not his. That kid did not look old enough to use well, like asinine. I don't know if it's because we said to make sure they're intelligent comments. So he was trying to like step up the triple word score. Because he was like a couple big words in there, didn't he? There was asinine, yeah. and there was something I, the, I've wasted between my eardrums or something like that. Like, he had a whole I thing. mean, he was, he. I think he was trying to step it up. I just, I mean, my personal opinion didn't get there. Yeah, you I, know I, what mean, I mean, I appreciate the, <laughs> I, I appreciate the, like, Scrabble usage. Yeah. yeah. I just don't think, I don't, I don't think he got to the level he was, he was trying to yeah. achieve, so. So if you're out there, try again. Yeah, try I mean, again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, uh, none of us are dumb in this group, so you're going to have to try pretty hard to insult us. Yeah. We've all been made fun of as children. Yeah. And Tanner, Tanner's got a head. Relentless. Matt was the fat kid. I had red hair. I had husky jeans. Yes. No, I did not. Yeah, there was I told it was like whatever your whatever your waist size was, and then right next to it was that same waist size husky. Yeah. 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 So as far as making fun of us, you gotta get up pretty early in the morning. But all right, guys, we appreciate listening. We'll see you next time.